uh, in, in this lecture, we're going to go through uh, the basics of system dynamics modeling uh, using Vensim as the uh, software that uh, for the class. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll sort of go through step by step uh, building a simple model. Uh, we're going to take the case that we discussed in class last time about the body weight uh, with the food intake and the calories and the exercise and, and try to build a simple model that will yield uh, the sort of the same results that we saw without using the software. And then I'll talk a little bit about how you can make the model more complex. Uh, we're going to be using Vensim and I'm going to open it now just to show you how it looks like. This is Benson 6. Uh, it's running um, on a Mac. Um, and um, let me go to that window and uh, let me just uh, get out of here. Um, and uh, let's see. So this is Benson. And for some reason, it's not opening properly. Wow, this is bad. Um, wow. Let me try this again. It's really strange, but uh, let's see. So you get the license. There it is. Um, I have no idea why that happened, but uh, um, it's good that it happened on video so you know what's going on. Um, and so the first step is uh, we're going to build a model from scratch. Uh, this is the, the uh, main uh, window uh, of operating for Vensim. I'm going to show you today a few of the features of the software. Um, as we um, build models of more complexity, we'll be using more and more of the features, uh, but rather than overload you in, in a single lecture with uh, with all the features. I don't think that's very useful. We'll build a simple model. Uh, so the first thing is that we're going to go to the top left uh, to this new model icon here. And um, this is going to pop up a dialog box. Um, and um, the first thing that you need to notice, notice is that uh, there are times divided, you know, the, um, here devised in Vensim, an initial time and a final time. And we're building system dynamics model, meaning that we're meaning we're building models that where the variables change over time, and uh, so we need to specify the time during which we want to to do that. In our case, um, and uh, I'm going to be referring back to the body uh, mass or the body weight model. Uh, I think I'll leave it at here. I, I think the time zero will be you know like the, the initial time at which you start running the model. Let's say this is today. Uh, time is zero, and the final time will be a hundred, and we'll be running uh, time steps of days. So there's a time step here, which I'll leave at one. So these are all default values that I'll leave as is, but I will change the units for time that are highlighted here. And I'm going to change those. I'm going to go ahead and change those to days, okay? <coughs> About the integration type that appears here, I'm going to leave it at that now. Um, this is the Euler method of integration, uh, and this has to do with the way the numerical procedure is used to solve the dynamic equations. And we'll, we're going to be doing a lecture uh, sometime soon where I'll go through the math uh, for those that are interested in the, in the, um, in the inner uh, workings of how these models make computations. But just to show you, there are a couple of methods that are used for integration. The Euler, which we'll leave as is, and the Runge-Kutta 4. Uh, which uh, I'll, we'll discuss later. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, so I'm going to OK out of this. Um, and right now I have essentially uh, the dynamics of the model defined. Uh, and I'm going to max, max out this, uh, this window here. So once I, I define the, sort of the time parameters of the model, then I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to add is this the state variable or the stock, as we discussed last time, which in this case was the body weight. So I'm going to add a, um, a box variable, okay, this will be like the stock, and what this is going to do is that it's going to allow me to place a little box anywhere in the model, and uh, immediately when you do that, it uh, pops up with a dialog box for you to introduce the name of the state variable. So I'm going to do that as the body mass, okay, so I'm going to do that. Once I re hit return, I get a little box. Um, and this box is placed um, in, in the center of the screen. Just a little nice feature that it has if you, you know, once, if you start building models, you can quickly realize how the, the screen can get small or crowded. Um, and you can, you probably need to move some things around. There is a little feature here, this hand, the move size. If you click on it, it allows you to, you know, place your hand there and move, you know, this box around, okay? So I'm going to place it, let's say, there and uh, for the time being. And then you can, you know, click out of that. 
So, so this defines the, the stock or the state variable for, uh, for the model. Okay, now, if you remember, we also had uh, the fluxes, uh, the uh, ins and outs uh, that come into, uh, into the stock. Uh, so for that, I'm going to go and define what are called rate variables. So these are the, the, the ins and outs. And I'm going to click on rate, and I'm going to place the rate, let's say, here. And then immediately I get an arrow that points, that allows me to point that, that rate to, um, to any variable. In this case, uh, the rate is defined with respect to the body mass because that's, that's the, the rate it feeds into. So I'm going to click there, and, it, and then again I get this dialog box that allows us to uh, put the name. So this, uh, I'm going to use this variable to define the uh, intake um, of calories into the body, and I'm gonna so I'm gonna call this. Um, I can call it anything I want. So I'm gonna call it calorie intake. Um, one piece of advice is you know we we keep keep the names of variables in uh, to a manageable size. Again, it's a matter of space, and and uh, you don't want to be calling you know a variable like a very very long list of words. So calorie intake. So you understand what this is, and uh, so now see what you have now. It's a, uh, a state variable body mass that is fed by, uh, you know, calorie intake. Calorie intake is, is, is the intake of, of that's going to make the stock change, okay? So we had um, the calorie intakes, and we'll, we'll come back to the specifics of those, but we can also at this, at this time define the rest of the uh, rate uh, variables, so the rest of the control variables or fluxes, okay? So we had the calories. Uh, we also had, if I... We call correctly. Um, we had uh, let's see the metabolism. Okay, so I'm going to place it there. I can place it anywhere with an arrow, um, and I'm going to call this the metabolism. Metabolism. Okay. Or actually, let me let me call it just for consistency. Um, um, metabolic calories. So again, so that it has it's got a um, now uh, it's got a little bit of consistency with the others. Now the and you can call them whatever you want. Again, uh, this is a very personal way of building tools. Now one thing that you need to notice here is that the the way we've conceived our model, the metabolism calories are going out of the system. However, um, Benson uses these arrows not necessarily in, in the direction of adding but in direction of relationship, okay? So, so this means that the, the um, control variable metabolic calories is linked as a, as a flux to the body mass, which is the state variable, okay? Now, we will be able to um, adjust for the, uh, the direction, the either adding or subtracting body mass uh, in, in a second, but so these arrows uh, shouldn't confuse you in that regard. These are just uh, re relationship-based arrows. So we had metabolism calories. Um, we also had uh, exercise calories, right? Uh, so I'm going to add another right variable. Um, for the sake of an argument, I'll put them here. And again, with my little arrow. And I'm going to call this exercise. And I'm going to call them calories as well. <coughs> OK, so let's get my exercise calories. And then the last flux um, control variable that we had um, was excretions. So um, and excretions was interesting because it was not expressed as calories. It was, it was expressed as a volumetric variable, and you know milliliters, um, as we discussed last time. Um, uh, so I'm going to call that. Oh, I think I oh, I think I messed up. Well, it's good I make errors because I think I added instead of a rate, I added a box variable. So this will give me an opportunity to talk. A little bit about what happens if you make an error. Okay, so um, there's nothing here, nothing happened. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my rate and uh, put it here with the arrow. Okay, and I'm going to call this excretions. Okay, you know this is uh, for sweat and for other other fluxes of, of liquids, but uh, for primarily um, from our body. Okay, so now um, we have the and you know if you wanted to get a little bit a more a touchy about how the aesthetically model looks. You can see this arrow is a little bit misaligned, so I can go and go to hand and uh, take this and shift it a little bit to the right. Let me see if this works. 
uh, yeah, well, not exactly as I wanted it to work, but that's okay. So anyway, that's a little uh, little side note. So now we have uh, calorie intakes, uh, exercise calories as outs, metabolic calories as outs, and excretions as in. Okay. Um, so um, the next thing we need to do, now we have conceptually, this is essentially the, con the concept model of the diagram. We have a body mass that's going to change over time because it's got it's got an intake of calories, it's got an intake of excretions, or actually a net intake of excretion, I should say, um, and um, metabolic calories and exercise calories. All right. So the next step in, um, in building this model with Vensim is to actually look at the, the quantitative way in which all these variables are linked. Okay, and that is done through um, going into this feature that's uh, it's called here equations. So you're gonna we're gonna click on the equations, and once I do that, um, then what happens is that all the all the boxes that require equations are um, are sort of highlighted. So we're gonna go one by one and sort of put in you know the equations just as we a little bit as we did last time. Um, with our model, uh, we're going to be doing uh, with the model in, in, in the little Excel sheet that we shared last week. We're going to be doing something similar here. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with the calorie intake. Okay, um, and uh, then we're going to go one by one. I'm going to do. I'm going to leave the body mass for last. There's really um, not a difference, and there's no sequencing here that that really matters. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, sort of looking at step by step. Also, building the model in this way uh, will help you think about what you need to put into the model. So it's a nice way of, uh, of looking at what you need. So I'm going to click on calorie intake, and then this big dialog box appears. And I want to show you a little bit of how, how this, what this box looks like. First thing is that it has a, a variable name, which is we've defined previously. It's calorie intake. Um, and there's a variable type here. Um, and uh, here it's uh, preset as a constant, and, and I'm going to leave it at that for, for at least for this first simple, simple exercise. We can actually uh, uh, define um, you know, other types of variables, and we're going to be visiting these for a second. I just wanted to show you uh, a little bit how it looked like, uh, so we're going to leave this at constant. Um, very important, I reiterated this last time, and it's more important even here when you build the models, the units. Okay. So the units of the calorie intake, um, we're going to say are calories, okay? Calories. So I'm going to write in calories, okay? Um, I think the rest I'll leave here. We'll, these controls we'll, we're going to be using later. I want to keep it simple for the time being. Um, and um, here on the right, you have uh, uh, right now the a list of variables that we have defined so far in the model, and these are all that we've to find the body mass, the intake, and the excretions, the exercise calories, the final time, the initial initial time, the metabolic calories, uh, the time step, which was one day, and uh, we're we're saving the calculations every 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 everyone. So these uh, we're sort of saving the calculations every day. Uh, that's this parameter here, which you don't need to worry about. That's going to be default in most cases. Um, so once you've done this simple definition. Um, uh, you can do a, there's a couple of controls here in the bottom. Um, you can check the syntax uh, if uh, you know this is uh, if this is correct. And you can do okay. In this field in the middle, uh, and we're going to go back to the controls uh, at the end. This is where you introduce the the value of it. Um, and if you recall, we had a uh, um, you know a, a value in, in the in the model that was 2,000 calories. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to go check the syntax. The syntax is going to say that the equation is OK, and, and then I just OK out of it. So once you do that, you can you will notice that now the calorie intake um, control variable, the flux, has been sort of completely defined as far as the model goes. We're going to do the same um, with the others. Uh, I'm going to go now to excretions. Um, actually, let me do let me all do all the calories first, and then we'll do the excretions, and then we'll circle back to the body mass. Exercise calories, uh, same deal, okay? The name is exercise calories, so this will go a little bit quicker. Uh, it'll, it'll be also a constant for the time being. I'm going to do this as the units of calories, right? 
Uh, I'm going to put a value. If you if you recall, the exercise calories were something like 500. So I'm going to leave it at that. Check sick tax. Okay, out. So now calories are defined. The metabolism calories, same deal. This is the name. They're constant. Uh, they have units of calories. The value that we used, I believe, was 1800. Okay. Um, as a preset, you know, we, we can always we can always go change that. And uh, so that's that. Uh, let's go to the excretions. Okay, the excretions will keep uh, as a constant. Now the units of these were milliliters, if you recall. Okay, so I'm going to put milliliters or simply ml. Okay, and uh, I think we had something like the net excretions. And 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 again, remember this is this is the influx of. of the ins minus out of liquid, so that's how we left it, and we had a net of 200. Um, and we're going to check the syntax and say it's okay. Now let's go to the body mass. Now, if you go to the body mass, um, you know you, the the first thing you're going to find is the the name. Now this variable is going to have a a type that is not constant because this is going to change over time. And in, in Vensim, um, there are a number of ways to uh, refer to them, but the the default for stock variables, uh, for state variables or stocks, is, um, is is what's referred to as level type variables. These are essentially variables that change over time. Um, so this is just a little bit of, of a little bit of system dynamics language that we, we need to start um, becoming familiar with and, and adopting. The units uh, are kilograms, right? Uh, now, because uh, uh, because this is a uh, a state variable, in addition to the equation, which I'm going to get to in a second, it requires an initial value. And if you recall, we had uh, an 80 kilogram for that for that number. Okay. Now, the equation here, because we've defined the the system dynamics diagram, it's uh, it's it's pre given, and so. So what this is telling me is that the body mass is going to be equal to the calorie intake plus the excretions plus the exercise calories plus the metabolic calories. So here we need to make some adjustments um, because uh, here's where we put some of the uh, some of the um, um, the conversion factors uh, or, or these converters that were referred to last time as well as the uh, directions. Okay, so let's go one by one. Uh, we know that the calorie intake, uh, if we express it in, in, in calories, we need to convert that to uh, uh, to um, body mass in kilograms. And we had a conversion factor of 7,700. Okay, so you, you divide by 7,700. Um, um, the the calorie intake, and that converts the calories to kilograms. Okay, the excretions also. Um, were in, in units um, where we needed to convert from milliliters to kilograms, and that conversion factor was a thousand. Okay. Exercise calories and metabolic calories, we, we both convert using the 7700 as well. Okay. So that converts all, so now we have everything in kilograms, but now we need to change couple of signs here because uh, exercise for example um, it subtracts uh, from the body mass okay and so does metabolism okay so now um, if you look at, at, at this uh, balance you have the calories in converted to kilograms the excretions in or net excretions in converted to kilograms the exercise calories out converted to kilograms and the metabolic calories out converted to kilograms so now we have essentially a, um, you know, a, a fully defined model. Uh, you know, it's good to check the syntax, and when you check the syntax, in this case, simple enough, um, you get an OK, and then you're OK out of this. And now you have, uh, you go back to the, um, this, uh, the, the conceptual body diagram, but now everything is defined. Okay. Um, so then the next step, once you have the model fully defined, you have the initial mass, you have all the fluxes defined with the right signs, with the right converters, uh, you can just uh, run the model. And uh, to do that, you go to, uh, you go up here 
to the dialog box and you choose uh, simulate. Okay, and I'm going to click on that. And um, here, um, I guess here, this is just a, a default. Do you want to save the sketch to enable? Yes, say yes. I, I guess there's no harm in doing this. And um, data set current already exists. Do you want to override it? I guess um, it had something preloaded here. Maybe some of the previous work I was doing. So I'm going to say yes, just to overwrite this thing. And then the model runs very quickly. Actually, you ran so quickly, we didn't even see it. Um, so what we should have now is essentially the, the um, dynamics of the body mass change over 100 days. Okay. Now, okay, so we've run the model. So how do we look at the results? And uh, so the next step is to look at a plot. And to do that, we're going to go to uh, the control panel uh, icon here. And that, that's going to pop out a um, number of things, but I, I, I'm going to point you uh, straight to, to the first one, which is these data sets. Um, and in the data sets, uh, um, you can see that I've been doing other things here. That's why I had, had preloaded something. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose this one that's called current, which is the one that we, we just did. Um, and I'll show you in a second how to change that name if you, if you like it. But let's say... I'm using current just to say this is the this is the current situation. Um, so we're going to be plotting the current case. I'm going to get out of there, and then um, once I've chosen what I want to plot, then I go to the left side panels, and there are a number of ways to display results. Uh, and today I'm going to just run some simple graphs. So I'm going to click there, and then this shows me this pops in a graph which I can move, okay? I can actually move around a little bit. And you can see that once you start trying to see the model, see it starts getting a little bit crowded here already. So I'm gonna do, actually, I'm gonna do something simpler. I'm going to uh, take, I'm gonna sort of select the whole conceptual model here. And I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna move it to the left, okay? Just a bit, just a tad. So then I can go back and move the graph to a location where I can see it a little bit more clarity. Okay, so now we have the conceptual model on the left and the results on the right. And, and you can see, uh, I mean, the graphs is a little, uh, I, I always say it and I joke around and I've actually sent the Benson guys, uh, you know, some emails about this, that the, the model interface looks a little bit retro. I mean, this, for people like me, who've been doing this for a long time. This is fairly familiar of how software graphics used to look, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, this, uh, they really need to work on their um, graphical interface, but actually other system dynamic softwares that I've looked at look the same, so it's not just them. I, I wonder why if it's a, if it's a software developer thing, I, I, I don't know. But anyway, let me go back to uh, the, the body mass graph, and it's essentially, these are the results that we saw last time, okay? Uh, you have the the body mass starts at 80 kilograms right there at time zero, and then it builds up, okay? Um, uh, you, if you remember, we only ran uh, the, the model uh, for a few days, like 10 uh, last time, um, and it built, it built up. But what happens here is that that buildup continues going on and, until it reaches, you know, something like 96 kilograms. So and we, and the way we portrayed the, the interpretation of these results last time was that this was not a sustainable not a sustainable um, a body weight or not a sustainable uh, body weight rise over time. Okay, so this was not a healthy or whatever whatever parameter we're looking at in terms of body mass. Okay, um, so so this is a simple, uh, you know, uh, uh, probably the simplest uh, uh, way we can phrase this model now. And um, what I want to do uh, uh, next is to to show you how um, we can uh, we can make some improvements or some adding some complexity into, uh, into this model formulation. So we're going to be doing uh, that now. So I'm going to, you know, we're going to uh, save this. Uh, and it's a, good, it's a good idea to save the model. And I'm going to call this, uh, I think I can save it as, and, um, and I think I'm, I'm going to call this um, body mass simple model, something like that. Or I'll just call it body mass model for the time being. Um, just uh, again, 
you, you can choose your own nomenclature, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Um, uh, for the time being, I'm going to save it on my desktop, then I'm going to move this model. So you're going to see this, this file that we just built here from scratch. I'm going to put it on our, on, on our Dropbox page. Um, and uh, the format will be saved as an, an events and model. And when, when I do that, so I'm going to, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get out of here for a second just to show you the desktop. Oh, this continues here, so I'm going to get out of that. So there's a file, uh, there's a little file here, body mass model. Dot MDL, which is for model, this is the extension. Okay, and uh, this uh, you're going to see on our Dropbox page. Uh, so I'm going to come back to Vensim now, and uh, so I recover um, my original conceptual model, which is still the same. And uh, uh, the other thing that's important is uh, that um, the plot that we had it's gone. It's it's gone from. Uh, from the screen, it's not gone from the model, so it's been saved already. And um, you know, let's uh, let's try to uh, get a little bit more creative here. And so, I think probably one of the questions that you're asking, okay, so what happens if we vary these inputs and outputs, the the calorie intake? You know, if if you eat more, eat less, or if you do more exercise, or if your metabolism is different. So because all human beings are different, um, so. And, and, and those are the kinds of things that, that system dynamics modeling allows you to do. Okay, so the, the next step is to make this model a little bit more complex. So we're going to go into another feature uh, that it's, uh, refer, refers to adjusting uh, the inputs and outputs of the model and see how the model changes. To look at how uh, inputs and outputs uh, can vary, we're going to be doing, uh, using a new feature or another feature of Benson, which is this I.O. object that's here. So I'm going to click there, and uh, I'm going to then click back in the, the main model screen, and this is going to bring up this uh, dialog here that allows us to select what type of uh, plot we want to see, what type of interactive plot. The plot we're going to be looking today, it's uh, referred to in Bensim as the output workbench tool. And the idea of that output workbench, workbench tool is to look at how the output variable, in this case the body mass, changes over time. Um, it will ask us to choose what variable we want to to um, to display as changing over time or changing in scenario, which in this case is it's a level variable, um, the only one we have now, which is body mass. So we're going to say OK. And um, um, it also allows us to display it in several ways. And uh, just to stick with consistency as before, I want to again choose that graph. Okay. So if we do that, if you do OK. You're going to get this little icon here that's a little bit of a cartoon. And uh, at this point, what you do is that you move it to where, wherever you want to have it. So let's put it there, um, more or less where we had the, the previous one before. And then to see what it looks like, we go to, to the lock screen, which is the screen that do doesn't allow us to move stuff anymore. And then again, we have our little graph like we had before. Um, so now. Um, we're going to um, uh, we're prepared to run the model again. It has the base model. Um, now, before we do that, I'm going to change the name of the simulation. Instead of current, I want to say this is a, a, um, a simulation with variable variable input outputs. Okay, I/O. Just to use a little bit of the uh, system dynamics and notation. So variable I/O is going to be, oh, variable I/O maybe it's. Uh, what happens if I say variable inputs and outputs? How about that? Is that okay? I guess it's okay. Um, so right now you can see that that added a a um, a little um, another another line which we haven't been able to see yet, but it's going to be red. Uh, um, and, um, and I'm gonna, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to run the model, but instead of running using a simulate, I'm going to run it using something that's called synthetic simulation, synthesim. I'm going to click there, um, and then you're going to say you're going to overwrite it because we just created, so that's fine. And then what you see that appears, it's a, um, you can see now that the inputs and outputs now have these little levers that you can actually change. Um, so 
uh, for example, let's take uh, the calorie intake, and I'm going to start increasing that by, by just moving it to the right. So now you see you start seeing, so you can see the, the you can actually see the little number. Um, so remember, at, we were at 2,000 before, okay? 2,000 essentially uh, renders uh, both, uh, both curves, the blue and the red. The red was the initial, the current simulation, and the blue is the new, and right now, uh, and this is something we didn't see before, is because at this point, they're both the same. But if I start varying the calorie intake to the right, I start getting even more unsustainable mass. But if I start putting on the left, and you can see this is very sensitive, so, um, but you can start seeing that I'm decreasing the calorie intake, I'm going to decreasing even further, further, and now, you know, you get to a point you know, if you're consuming 1,500 calories, for example, um, your original weight, uh, gait, uh, weight gain, uh, body mass gain, was the red curve, and now it's this curve. Okay, so I'm going to leave the calorie intake at 1,500, and I'm going to say, well, let me increase exercise from 500 calories to. Oops. See now, if you, I'm going to put. Let's say I'm able to burn 1,000 calories. Let me see where that lands me. That's right about there, yeah, at about a thousand calories. Uh, you're still gaining weight, um, but it's it sort of becomes a little bit more stable. Um, if you increase your metabolism, it starts going down. If you decrease your metabolism, you know it starts going up. Okay, so if you instead of instead of uh, 1,800, you your body's able to burn naturally 2,000 calories, 2025. You're almost stable. And again, your excretions uh, here, if you, you drink more water, you know, it starts going up again. You start increasing, you know, and decreasing. So you see, this is a very nice, uh, you know, very nice way to see how different inputs very rapidly because, and this is running in real time. I mean, I think the, one of the things that you need to realize here is that as we change these levers, the model, the Vensim tool, is making the, the computations to the in real time as you pull the lever. So this is something really re remarkable about this. And it's uh, and you can understand and you can see how this uh, type of uh, approach will be very, very uh, useful in a setting where you're presenting results to a group of people who want to see results in real time. Okay, And this is one of the ways I've used this tool before is, uh, you know, in simple public forums or in simple discussions with several individuals um, around the table who want to see, well, what happens if we change this, we change that, of course, in, 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 in a much more, in, in, with more complex models and, and with more policy-oriented topics, not necessarily body mass. But you can see how that can be done very easily and very quickly, um, and it's a very nice feature. Uh, so uh, before I pull out of this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually save this model, okay? I'm going to save the second model um, as I'm, going to, I'm not going to call it body mass model anymore. I'm going to call it um, I'm going to call it variable. So I'm going to take the model away. It's a thing that's over that's uh, sort of overstated. Variable body mass, uh, and I'm going to save it. Okay. So just so and, and again, we'll post this this very one here. And um, even though we're going to be posting each and every one of these models on, on, our, on our site for, for you to, to, to look at. I really encourage you to, you know, get down with Vensim and build these models from scratch and actually act, start playing around and adding, exploring more features, okay? But this is a uh, sort of a nice a couple, um, a couple of tools that I wanted to, uh, to show. So we're going to be doing that one. Um, and... Um, I, I am now going to uh, show you a, a third model that I built, uh, and that one is a little, um, uh, it's got a, a, a few other uh, tweaks, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit out of Benson now that I've saved everything, and uh, uh, I'm going to go to our Dropbox folder and uh, show you this Lecture 3 uh, folder now, and there, there's a, a variable exercise body mass model that I built. And, and it's essentially built on the same um, on the same uh, sort of platform. Um, now I, I want to walk you. 
uh, through this model because I, I want you I want to show you a few things uh, we're not going to be building it from scratch because it just takes a little bit of time to build it to build it real time but I do want you to uh, build it yourself um, maybe make some tweaks to it I'll show you what I changed here and um, and then you can you know you can start playing it around with your yourself the idea with this model is that instead you know uh, instead of using these converters uh, you know the the way we we did the model before uh, we had uh, and I'll, I'll show you let's look at the like the equations you know the I'm gonna look at the equation for the body mass and uh, <clears throat> the way uh, the way the model was built uh, this model is built a little differently it doesn't have a, I just want to point you to to the to the equation here you can see that the conversion factors are no longer here and there's a reason for that um, and uh, okay out of this there's a reason for that is because I've, I've, I've incorporated the converters in, in a in a little bit of an indirect way but I think it's in terms of um, in terms of debugging a model and debugging is an expression uh, used uh, to try to understand where when there's an error a bug in a model where can you find it uh, so you can see that this is a this 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 uh, model is built a little bit differently and I'll, I'll walk you through it and I'll let you I'll, we'll look at the equations there is still the stock of body mass again in kilograms okay now the um, the stock is fed by essentially three uh, control variables uh, that I've, I'm, I'm I'm putting them in a little different fashion I'm calling this mass input calories mass output also calories and metabolism also calories now um, if I'm gonna look at equation wise at each of these and I'm gonna look at the mass input for example okay now the mass input is, is essentially defined um, as the input calories divided by 7700 so the idea here is that uh, I have another variable that I call input calories and I um, I put the conversion factor in the definition of the mass input okay so what happens when you do that is that this this new variable that I'm calling mass input it's got units of kilograms per day okay as opposed to just calories and uh, let me show you why that makes sense it's because that mass input is fed by another variable here that's called input calories so I'm gonna click on that and you can see that now the input calories is just simply defined as 2000 so what we're doing instead of having see before we had everything as a single arrow is that I'm breaking up <coughs> the input into two steps okay and why would I do that you're asking yourself well it depends I, I think it, it depends on how um, um, on how you build your model and, or a little bit of the architecture of the model um, and um, and how you make it easier to understand to other people that can review your model if no one's going to be looking at this at, at your model formulation if no one's going to be looking at the entire thing you may be better off with a simpler one because you're able to interact with it because you built it now if other people are going to be looking at this or if it's a collaborative effort sometimes it is it is is more useful to break off uh, complex calculation steps into, into simpler steps so here I broke up the mass input into two steps a mass input itself and the calories that feed that mass input itself um, you can actually look at the same calories so if, we, if I look at and I'm gonna actually look at that the way other way around I define a single variable it's called metabolic calories and if you do that I it's pretty much a constant it's got a value of 1800 okay that's fine um, and then that feeds into a variable I call metabolism now if you look at the equation for metabolism it takes the metabolic calories and divides them by 7700 to convert them to kilograms per day okay um, actually this I just noticed here this is a mistake here see this should be here kilograms per day see can you make mistakes um, check the syntax and okay out of it so I'm gonna save it now um, just so I don't save my don't lose my work I'm gonna save it um, now this one is interesting because the way um, I, I, I broke up uh, the <coughs> uh, 
I broke up the um, the exercise portion of this into several things, um, and um, let let me look at them um, uh, a little bit backwards. I I'm, I'm going to start with the mass output in calories, which is a variable called exercise divided by 7,700. And again, this is an error. See, this should be kilograms per day, and I should have spotted that before. It's great that I didn't, so I you you know you can, you can always look at this. Now that is fed by a variable called exercise, and um, here um, um, you know one of the comments that someone made was uh, uh, you know when we had the simple body model last week was well you know the same exercise won't cause the same <coughs> calorie um, expenditure for for the same individual so. I just created a simple um, a simple equation uh, to um, to reflect that fact, and this is the fact that the uh, exercise variable, okay, and uh, which has units of calories, so I'm going to put that there, um, has a relationship uh, that is uh, referred to. In this case, uh, it's got defines another variable that's called maximum daily exercise. So I, I said, well, there's a maximum amount of calories that an individual, a typical individual, will burn per day, um, and that maximum uh, daily exercise is attenuated uh, um, depending on your body mass. Um, and um, and I use a, a, an expression here, and we'll we'll look at this type of expression. Uh, I I don't want to get into the expression uh, uh, today. Uh, because it gets a little bit into the physics uh, of body mass loss, and and we'll discuss similar expressions uh, in the future. But essentially, um, um, we might be able to look at a graph of this ver variable as well. But this essentially means that <clears throat> the same amount of calories, uh, if your body mass is heavier, uh, will result in less body mass. If you're lighter, it'll result result in more body mass. So let's say. Um, a just simple, just simple pedestrian exercise, a five-mile run or a one-hour uh, Zumba workshop um, will not mean the same in terms of calorie expenditure and in terms of body mass loss for an individual that is uh, 60 kilograms versus an individual that's 100 kilograms of weight. It's it's a different it's a different um, math. So this is, is meant to capture that. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna pop out of that, and then I think <coughs> that I allowed a a maximum calorie expenditure per day of a thousand. So this is like the, the maximum. Otherwise, you know, if, if you if you burn more than this, you're gonna die or it's gonna be unhealthy. And I can, you know, I can tweak this number up and down. So that but I just want to show you that's there. Okay. <clears throat> so what happens if you run this model? Um, and you can see that I'm running an input, a, a dynamic input output uh, model. So I'm going to I'm gonna lock the screen. Okay. So here again, you have your, your original model, and then I'm going to run the, uh, the synthetic simulation. So if you do that, you know, what you see is that you get these levers. Now, and this is the reason I, I did it this way, the levers are shown only in the constant variables that you tweak. And there's three here. You have your input calories, which the default is 2,000. You have your metabolic calories with a default of 1,800. And then you have the maximum daily exercise of a thousand. So let's start tweaking. And if, if you do that, you can see uh, if that here, um, the the current scenario was the one we had before, and uh, this new scenario that's called body mass with variable exercise. So with uh, it's it's the blue. And you can see that here you're doing a lot more. Um, and and, and th in this case, the body mass started at 80. And what happens is that you're if you're running, you know, if you're burning a thousand calories per day, of course your weight's going to go down like crazy, um, and um, so you can say, well, what happens if I if I do a little bit less exercise, you know? And I'm going to, uh, oops, sorry, I went the other way. If I, I'm going to go back down to 500, which was the number I had before, if you remember, and you see that you get, you know, the sort of the, the body mass um, loss uh, for for a person for an individual. That started out with 80 kilograms. Again, uh, this is a daily exercise, and um, um, and the amount of, so the amount of calories burned in this case daily depends on the daily body weight. So it's 
It's a very dynamic model. And, and, and what we've done here is where we've introduced something that's called a nonlinearity into the model. And we're going to be looking at these uh, these uh, features in, in, in you know in more detail as uh, if we do our models more complex. And then you can, of course, you can tweak your you know your your exercise more um, and um, or less. Again, you can um, change your, your metabolic calories, same scenario, and same with your input calories, you know, same scenario, you know. Um, so I wanted to, uh, you know, show you this example. Um, I want you to think of ways <coughs> to, uh, to um, make this model um, more complex, more simplified. Think, um, and, and one of the things that you, you've already, are, you're probably already realizing from these exercises with uh, the body mass is that the output of the model, this graph that we're seeing here, uh, is largely a, a the result of the assumptions and, and that you make and, and, and the structure of, 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 the, of the model. Okay, uh, and that's something that I, uh, I I will reiterate in my commentary uh, for this lecture is that you need really to um, realize that the there is a relationship between the assumptions that you make and the results that you get. The nice thing, though, about this interface um, is that it allows it allows you to test your your test your assumptions and to test uh, your uh, um, you know uh, even the numerical values that you use very very quickly in real time. I mean, you can say you know I can make me my assumption of you know not running or, or, or running too much or or dieting or not dieting too much. You know, it you can really see the up you know the results immediately. And, and it's very, very useful in that regard. It's a very, very powerful tool uh, to aid um, um, in, in looking and visualizing results. One general criticism I have, and I already mentioned this before today, is, is the, is I'd like to see better, a better graphical interface. I mean, I think this could be, this could look much cooler than it does. This looks retro. This looks like, you know, the kind of model that I used to run, you know, many, many years ago. So with that said, uh, I'm, I'm gonna uh, save this model and um, I'll make and I'm gonna make it available for, uh, for you in, in our Dropbox folder, uh, and I'm gonna be uh, loading up uh, the, the, these video presentation very shortly for you to look at. Okay, so I hope uh, you um, are, are able to see this. Um, post any questions on on our discussion page on Facebook, uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing how you. Um, how you interact with with these models please uh, play around with Vensim uh, please play around with these models that I've showed you today make changes uh, familiarize yourself with the interface uh, make changes look at results and um, uh, report any insights either insights gained or misunderstandings or things you're understanding and, and we'll be able to to look at those okay so I'll leave it at that and uh, thanks a lot for being with uh, with uh, us on this lecture.